Hi, everybody. How are you today? I hope you're having a great day. I hope that the sun is shining in your world and that you are staying happy, healthy, and above all, safe. I wanted to talk with you a bit today about a Buddhist teaching that I heard, and I just want to share it with you. And when we're finished with that, I'm going to talk with you a little bit about real life renos, because I know that some of you watch that, and I want to tell you about the upcoming show as well. So let me start with the Buddhist teaching. Now, this is something that I heard on a podcast as I was driving a couple of weeks ago, and I liked it so well that I listened to it again. The, the entire podcast just fascinated me. Anyway, this is the teaching from the Buddha. The Buddha once asked a person, if a person is struck by an arrow, is it painful? And the person said, it is. The Buddha then asked, if that same person is struck by a second arrow, is it even more painful? And the person responded, it is. The Buddha then explained, in life we cannot always control the first arrow. However, the second arrow is our reaction to the first. And with this second arrow comes the possibility of choice. Choice. You know, that is something that really resonates with me, and I wanted to share it with you because I think the entire metaphor relates so deeply to so many things that are going on in this world today. The first metaphor could be for, or sorry, the first arrow could be a metaphor for illness, for the news that we hear on the TV, for perhaps a tragedy in our community. It could also be for something good. For those of us of a certain age, it could just be a metaphor for the fact that we are aging and that we age one more day every day is not something we can control. However, the second arrow is our ability to choose. That's where we get to have control. Of course, choosing not to do anything is also a choice. I, I realize that. I talk a lot about maintaining control of our lives, and perhaps this is why it just resonates me with me so deeply. Choice is everything. Independence is everything. I'm going to give you three examples of how this first arrow, second arrow metaphor can be meaningful in our lives. The first is a story just about me. For my entire life, I've been somebody who has consumed news religiously. I consume it in all forms, all through the day. These days, though, I have chosen to go about my life a little differently where it concerns the consumption of news. I find it sometimes overwhelming. And I think that particularly as women, we try to, or we want to try, to solve everything. And the problems of the world are just not something that I can solve myself, not alone anyway. And it can, it can just become a little bit too overwhelming and I need some balance. So my choice is not to watch and digest the news all day long. I don't need to hear any issue being analyzed six ways to Sunday. Yes, I still want to know what's going on in the world. Don't misunderstand. I want to know what's going on and I do want to understand the issues and keep up on the day-to-day -day activities. I just don't need it to consume every neuron of my brain all day long. I do need that balance. So the second arrow for me is the choice to find balance. Now, the second story that I'm going to tell you concerns an elderly couple, 88 and 90 years old. The 90 year old has peripheral neuropathy, can't feel much from the knee, above the knees down, uh, can't feel much in the fingers either, has Parkinson's, stage four dementia, and a host of other little health challenges requires a walker, falling is a regular occurrence, no idea how to cook, clean, or care for a house. 
if you guessed that that was the husband in the relationship, you would be right. The 88 year old is the wife and she's had a number of small strokes, TIAs. She has a pacemaker, a bunch of other minor, more minor health issues. Their family has told them that it's time to move into a care facility. They're having none of it. The first arrow is the health issues that they are having. The second arrow is their denial of the choice to have a life within a framework that is familiar with their issues and can provide them with greater support and a better life than the isolated life that they are choosing is able to provide them with. Now the family knows that their denial of the issues and their reluctance to do anything about it means completely that at some point one of them will experience a catastrophic event which will land them in the hospital and from their hospital bed they will be told they are not going home again because the care that they require has descended beneath the level that they are able to provide to themselves. Other people will be making choices for them from that moment on. That is their choice and that is their second arrow. The third story I'm going to tell you is about an elderly man who lives by himself. His wife has passed away or had passed away because they're both passed now. The man lived in his own home, maintained it to an extent his adult children lived nearby and were able to help him out with groceries, washing the windows, cutting the grass, and so on. Driving his car, however, is another issue entirely. The man over time developed range of motion issues with his head. So when he sat in the driver's seat, he was not able to turn his head from side to side to see what was going on beside him or behind him. He basically turned the car on, put it in reverse and hit the gas. He relied on people going by on the street to see him and to stop and give way. So the first arrow was his declining health. The second arrow, his reaction to it was the, to ignore it, to take the chance with his health and the health of other drivers on the road and pedestrians on the sidewalk. He could have had an accident that killed or injured someone. He could have altered the life of his victim or perhaps taken his own life. Before that happened, he passed away. The second arrow, his reaction was a disregard of other human life, except for his own wants and desires. He wanted to maintain that independence at any expense. Now, I know that the two stories, the second and the third that I told you are absolutely true. I know these people, I am familiar with their stories, but they happen all around us all the time. There is a lot going on in this world of ours at the moment and that first arrow is completely out of our control. That second arrow though, that's the one that really matters. It's our reaction to it. We can let us be hit by that second arrow. We can duck and avoid it. We can bend and let it go by. Seeing it, but not being hit by it. We can catch it and stop it in its tracks, or we can take ourselves closer to the source and control the direction that that arrow goes in. I think our viewers will know that for me, the last option is the one that I choose. I choose to control the direction of that arrow. Now, to be clear, sometimes that second arrow means choosing between options that we would really rather have none of. That couple that I told you about, for instance, the 88 and 90 year old, they wanted to stay in their home. The choice they had to make was between options that they rejected. It, it was the ability to choose which facility they went to before they were made to go. They could have chosen a facility that friends of theirs were already in. They could have chosen an area of the city that they wanted to live in. They were having none of it. So choice doesn't always mean choosing between yippee and oh gosh. 
Sometimes it's looking at the choices before us and choosing between bad and worse. There's always good, better, and best. Sometimes best is not really a legitimate option. But the option to choose, that's everything. That is absolutely everything. Whether you have an issue that is facing you that, like me, is just an overwhelming amount of news that is not great and you want to find balance or you want to figure out how to social distance and still be social or you want to figure out how to cook better meals or you want to make a choice in how you live your life, you get to choose. And truly, I think what is important to all of us is that we do get to choose, that we don't relinquish that control to someone else to make those choices. Okay, that is that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. Hi, Galen, how are you? Good to see you. I'm glad that you were able to pop in today. I wanna to talk with you for just a moment about real life renos, which you can find at facebook.com forward slash real life renos. My producing partner and I did our first show last Thursday. We're doing our second one tomorrow. And I would like to invite all of you to come. I know that a lot of our oldish viewers watched because right out of the gate, we had over 3,000 views. And I can't tell you how thrilled Melissa and I were to see that. Um, now, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about outdoor living because that is a problem in terms of accessibility for many people. Now remember, accessibility isn't always something that we face as we age. Accessible living matters to little children. It matters to people in a wheelchair. It matters to people who have any kind of a challenge that they face in their life. So I do invite you to join us. We're still playing around a little bit with the time of day that is best suited for these shows. Uh, 11 a.m. is the choice tomorrow. So you can go to the Facebook page, Real Life Renos, right now and get a reminder. I have put a little uh, advertisement up there. You can choose to get a reminder for that. And uh, that would be great to see you there and participate in that discussion. We had a lot of really good discussion last week. We talked about bathrooms, and that was that was great. It was It's actually archived. I know people don't really want to talk about bathrooms all the time, but they are ever so important, and it was a great discussion. Elaine, what you are talking about hits home with our mother's situation, right? So many people, so many people, and you cannot force people to do things they don't want to do. You just can't. So the family involved with that couple are not able to force them to move. Unfortunately, they have to wait until that catastrophic event happens because it will. It will. So will. He has already fallen multiple times. She is helping him get up. And she's an 88-year-old. She has health challenges of her, her own. So in helping him, she may damage herself beyond the point of being able to remain independent to the extent that they are now. And the gentleman with the car, you know, his family was not able to take that car away from him or disable it in any way. He would just put it back together again. You know, challenging, challenging issues, and we can't fix everything. But to the extent that we are able, as I have long advocated for, we can control our own lives. We can make our lives be what we want them to be, and hopefully learn the lessons. Skylane, you can learn the lesson that your mother and dealing with her is teaching you now. and. I hope I learned that lesson. I'm trying very hard to learn that lesson so that I don't impose untenable or distressful situations on my children. So there you go. I will leave you with that. I will leave all of you with that. I am grateful to have seen all of you today. And for those of you who are watching this in an archive format, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. I will see those of you who are able to join us tomorrow on the Real Life Renos page at 11 a.m., I will see our oldish viewers back here on the oldish next Wednesday at 12 noon for another edition. Until then, please take care of one another, take care of yourselves, be well, and do remember that it takes a village to age a senior. Mwah.
Bye, everybody.